So if I have painted a very uh, gloomy picture of, the, of how we function and what happens when we are in the stressed mode, let me remind you, it's not gloomy, it's only gloomy if, it's, it, if it prevails for extended periods of time. In the short run, it can help us. In the short run, the sudden spike in energy can help us. In, in the body, it helps us run away from threat and danger. In the mind, it also helps us. How does it help us in the mind? It helps us focus on whatever we are doing and just getting it done without being distracted, without thinking about all the millions of other things. And the big picture is not always good. Sometimes we want to bring, bring closure to our project. So it helps us have work on things with stringent deadlines. And it can be functional. It's just that we don't want to be in that state for prolonged periods of time. There's yet another uh, benefit, if I may say, of stress, really. Um, so there's one more, so there's adrenaline, there's cortisol, there are actually several, but there's one more predominant hormone that is released during stress, which is known as oxytocin. Now oxytocin has uh, become very popular these days, it's sometimes known as the trust hormone, sometimes it's called the cuddle hormone, and the reason it's got, called, got these nicknames really is because oxytocin works on our social selves, it works on the social part of our brain. It triggers us to want to go out and make connections. It's the hormone that's released in mothers during childbirth and immediately after childbirth. It's the hormone that makes you want to bond with others. It's the hormone that makes you reach out and ask for physical comfort with other human beings. It's the hormone that um, actually gets you out to socialize to ask for support as well as give support for those who need it. Now this makes sense as well, right? I think nature was quite brilliant in, in putting this hormone into the mix of the stress hormones that was released. Because in a time of crisis, in a time of uh, danger and calamity, have you noticed that people tend to bond together in unusual ways that they otherwise wouldn't have? I was, uh, I mean, uh, I was, when I was around 13 years old, there was this huge fire accident in my town and uh, yes, I, I was burnt as well, but I survived. A lot of my friends did not survive. We lost, the, it was a small town and the town altogether lost about, I think 300 people and several more were burnt. Families were, you know, there was, everyone had lost either a friend or a neighbor or someone in their family. But, and it, and it is indeed, it, it, it's a very sad, it was a sad incident. But, but the calamity, the stress triggered so much of bonding within that community, between all the residents, between the children and the schools, between, between the communities. And you, and you see that over and over again. You, you, see, that, you see that in uh, when there are natural calamities in places. Young people just get together, bond, socialize. They don't want to be alone. They want to do things together. That's oxytocin, really, playing out. And I think that was part of nature's design, that when we face threat, it, nature wanted us to go out, seek comfort, give our comfort, cooperate with our friends, not with our foes, not with our enemies, right? So the negative lens is there to miss, to yes, to be cautious of future attack. But with people whom we already know, oxytocin ensures that we don't sit and face our problems alone. We try and reach out, get help, bond, communicate. Yeah, so um, so recently, recently there was a TED talk by a uh, Stanford uh, prof psychologist, Professor Kelly Mickle, and uh, where I think it's titled uh, "Stress as a Friend" or "Befriend Your Stress" or something like that. And true, I mean she's right. I agree with a lot of the evidence that she presented, except, except. I don't want us to forget that while stress does have these benefits and some of the benefits she mentioned are yes that it wants to make you go out and bond but there, there were other benefits as you know uh, so one of the main points she made is that it's people's attitude towards stress rather than the stress itself that causes damage and that is absolutely true so we already already talked about that when we talked about the self-fulfilling prophecy and just extend that to the body that's placebo effect right our beliefs and thoughts can actually uh, lead our bodies to believe that something is helpful or something is harmful so if we fear stress it's going to damage us more 
And, and, and while I agree with Professor Kelly on that, I would still not uh, advocate that we would, we would want to be in stress for prolonged period, periods of time because the other, the other side of the story, the fact that the cortisol is suppressing your digestive system functioning, your immunity system, your reproductive system, um, that's true. Your growth, that's also true. So oxytocin may be giving you some benefits, true, yes, but cortisol is, is, is suppressing certain other systems. And we, can we take a little bit of the suppression? Yes, we can. But can we take prolonged suppression? No. How I would fall sick, right? That's why my digestive system would break down if it's suppressed for prolonged periods of time. If my immunity system is suppressed for prolonged periods of time, I would catch a cold, I would fall sick. And indeed, we do fall sick when we're stressed for prolonged periods of time, right? So, um, while I agree that stress need not really be harmful in the short run, we are well equipped. Stress does equip us to actually grow up and to face that challenge, gives us that extra edge, the extra energy, uh, has good side effects like wanting, you know, leading us to go out, connect with people we care about and care for, it, it's good, but in small doses. In large doses, chronic, chronic stress can still be bad. It can be bad for our body, and yes, it can be bad for our thinking styles as well, because we don't want to always be focused on small things. We want to be able to see the big picture at times. We want to be able to see the good things in life. We want that positive lens back, because that's how we're going to we're going to grow, that's how we will build our resources and that's how we will grow. So again, stress not necessarily bad, but good in small doses, absolutely handleable. I think, just remember, just remember the line, zebras don't get answered, right? So use it as a spy, for energy, focus, good. Without it, we probably wouldn't be that functional, right? Or that productive. But in the long run, not so.